My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Whether you believe in angels or not, you might appreciate the story. Last week, on Monday, my friend and I arrived in Rio. We took an Uber from the airport to our Airbnb. And no sooner did we get out of the car than did our, Air, or than did our Uber decide to drive off with all of our luggage. <laughs> At that point, I think my friend, who's normally agnostic, became a believer in angels as he ran down the street, chasing after the car, yelling, that's our luggage. <laughs> we did get it, and maybe our guardian angel did help us in the long run. As lighthearted as that may be, this whole feast of angels and St. Michael and all the angels may seem to be like a curious feast for us as Christians. We don't actually really talk a lot about angels in our tradition. And unfortunately for us, angels have taken on sort of this uh, cutesy sort of thing in our culture. You know, unfortunately, people will use the expression when a child dies that the child, that heaven has gained another angel. It's unfortunate because humans are glorious and dignified in themselves. We don't actually become angels upon death. Rather, God draws us in as we are. Or angels take on sort of this mythic character in which seems strange and foreign to us. And it may be so because when you read the Old Testament, you hear of how the seraphim have multiple wings and burn up in flames as they go before the throne of God. All this is all very curious to us, particularly in the day of science and reason. To speak of principalities and powers that are beyond our sight and imagination seems like the tale of a child. But I'd like to propose something different to you today. And that is this. What if the power of God is greater than that which you and I can ever see or imagine? What if the realm between the here and the hereafter might actually be closer to us than what we can ever possibly conceive? What if God's love is so immense that God will do all in God's power to be with us in our times of joy, in our times of sorrow, in our times of suffering? You see, angels are manifestations of the power of God. In the Jewish tradition, in fact, much of what we believe of angels actually comes from the Jewish tradition, not necessarily from the Christian tradition itself. Christians largely adapted not only the, the Old Testament vision of angels, but much from the other Jewish books as well. And even Islam has a rich tradition of angels and powers. And in all these traditions, when they speak of them, they speak of angels as being manifestations of God's love and power entering into people's lives in moments where they may most need God's power. Of course, you and I are familiar with Jacob, which the gospel reading makes reference to. Jacob, who is fleeing from his family, fleeing from a difficult time, finds himself laying down in God opening up the heavens and showering upon him the power of God coming down with angels descending and ascending. Essentially what God was saying to him is heaven or the afterlife, God's presence is here more than what you and I possibly know or conceive of. Jacob was so moved by the sight that Jacob cried out, here is the house of God, God's dwelling place among humanity. Jesus in the New Testament shows us that God sees all of us well before we become aware of ourselves. Nathaniel, who doubted and questioned, can anything good come out of Nazareth, 
finds that, yes, something good can come out of Nazareth. And the one that does actually knows him even before he knows himself. And then there too, Jesus says to him, you may be amazed by this, but wait till you see that the power of God is resplendent and powerful around you. See, the problem, I think, in our day and age is we don't actually open ourselves up to mystery. We want everything to be explicit. We want everything to be rational, reasonable. We want everything, basically, to fit into the boxes that we want them to fit. And if they don't, we reject it. But in God's world, in the great cosmos, in the great universe of God, things aren't always reasonable, rational, or explicit. And in fact, there's perhaps greater beauty in mystery, wonder, and awe. Love you can never describe fully or define what it is nor should you, because love is greater than that of which any of us could ever speak. And so too is God, and God's working in creation. That God's power, God's desire to be with humanity is so great that God has imagined or envisioned a creation much greater than that which we see before us. That God's presence and power is so before us and around us that we are guarded and kept on every side by the very hand of God through God's holy angels. To me, the beauty of angels, and again, this may be one of those things that most of us may not want to accept, but to me, the beauty of angels shows that all of the cosmos is resplendent with God's glory. things visible and invisible. And even science has become deeply aware that there's realities that we cannot possibly speak of. Take a look at quantum physics, which clearly shows that the universe isn't always reasonable or clear. But that's a beauty to it, the beauty for mystery, that God may work in ways well beyond our imagination. But God always does so for us. God's desire is that we may come to know God and live in God's life. And so God provides all and guards us entirely and completely. Again, none of us will become angels after death. We ourselves are beautiful and wonderfully made in our own way. But perhaps we may be able to see the wondrous creation that God has for us well beyond what is ever present here today. Amen.